Welcome to Election Watch 2015. I'm your host, Teresa Whipple. Bill Wilcock joins us in the studio today. He is running for Edmonds School District Board of Directors, Position 1. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Teresa. Great to be here. Great to have you. Thank you. Could you share some background information on yourself and also why you are running for the school board? Uh, sure. I'd be happy to. Um, I'm running for the school board for three primary reasons. Uh, uh, first and foremost, I'm passionate about education and student achievement. Secondly, uh, I'm driven and motivated by giving back to the community. And thirdly, um, I've been engaged at the district level with several uh, community and volunteer positions. I want to leverage that experience into a leadership position in the district. Mm -hmm. And you've had kids, three kids who've gone through the schools, right? So you've yes. had intimate experience <laughs> at, in many different ways. Well, we've crossed paths in uh -huh, that respect. We have. Amanda and Andy both uh, graduated, and my other two children, uh, Robbie and Caroline, graduated from Edmonds Woodway mm -hmm. High School. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Kathy and I, uh, we've been married uh, 27 years, uh, lived uh, 24 of those here in Edmonds. Uh, we started and raised our family here. Um, kids had a great experience at the high school and have gone on to do wonderful other things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think I remember looking at some of your background that you were in, you've been involved in some of the district committees that parents have uh, been involved in. Yeah, actually, um, so when I refer to engagement in terms of my motivation for running, it uh, really expands into, well, let me elaborate just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I. You know, got, we, we've all, a number of parents have been very active with their kids' education. Um, uh, my own experience uh, culminated at the high school um, by, uh, with a group of other parents starting the Edmonds Woodway Athletic Booster Club. So we kind of had, and that lasted for seven years. Um, you're familiar with some of that work. Mm -hmm. The boosters proudly raised over a half a million bucks, went to a lot of really good uh, things, including after uh, scholarships and after school tutoring programs. But even during that tenure, um, I started participating with some of the volunteer um, committee work at the district level. And um, I found that also to be rewarding and fulfilling because it gave me a much broader perspective on the doings and workings of, of the district, what makes the clock tick, if you will, and not just a one school um, perspective in that respect. And um, that included what was the Citizen Planning Committee. Um, that has evolved now into the Strategic uh, Directions Initiative. I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. Um, but I've also been involved in many other ways uh, in terms of attending the Superintendent's Roundtable uh, sessions, of course, attending school board meetings and participating there, and att attending several of the community forums um, associated with uh, budgets and making, you know, how the, how the district is making decisions therein. So a lot of involvement and engagement in, yeah. at that level. Sounds like it. Well, um, so what are, um, since you've had, you know, a chance to kind of take a look at the district both, you know, at your own kids' school level right. and also at the bigger picture level, what do you think are, um, let's just start with maybe three challenges that you see facing the district in, in the near future that you think the school board needs to address? Yeah, um, well, again, being engaged at the district level uh, gave me a, a unique um, opportunity, if you will, to understand that kind of on a comprehensive basis. And I, th I think the priorities and challenges for the district align with how the Strategic Directions Initiative has structured its work groups. And there are five work groups there, actually. Uh, graduates who are ready for life. Um, there is uh, equity of opportunity work group. There is a preschool through third grade early learners subcommittee. Uh, effective learning for all students is yet another one. And there's another one focused on uh, facilities and enrollment. So you get an idea of just the breadth and the nature of uh, the priorities um, for the district. But it's, it's, a, it's really a, a wonderful structure because it's through that that the superintendent and the board members um, have been able to engage the community in um, building a collaborative vision uh, and set of priorities for, for the uh, district to undertake. So um, it's not just one, two, or three challenges. Each of those work groups has a series of challenges, um, but are collecting uh, the inputs from um, just, uh, all volunteers, uh, to help drive what that strategy should be. And that in turn will feed, um, my understanding is that in turn will feed 
uh, the board and as a director of the board what I would hope is that we can use that information to decide what it is that the district needs to undertake as priorities and then turn it over to uh, Superintendent Brossett and his staff to decide how that gets implemented within the district. Okay, all right. One of the things that um has come up as a as a topic of conversation an issue for some school districts and parents but it's the the common core state standards mm -hmm. um and you know always have to kind of put this caveat in for maybe somebody who doesn't have kids in school and may not know what those are but basically you know uh, national k-12 standards um mm -hmm. that emphasize career and college readiness um for all um in some places, they've generated some controversy. Some mm -hmm. people kind of talk about standardized testing, and not everybody's necessarily in favor of it. Um, how, you know, what's your impression of how that's being implemented yeah. in the Edmonds district, and what lies ahead for that? Well, um, standardized testing is a controversial topic, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a host of research, ton of scholarly papers um, that have tried to assess and decide, you know, is it meaningful and how best is it used? Um, first and foremost, I would say I'm, uh, I'm not a proponent of using standardized tests in a very narrow view. I think when it comes to evaluating student achievement, um, a broader and more comprehensive classroom assessment is required. So point number one, right? Mm -hmm. Point number two is that, and again, on a very, looked, on, looked at on a very narrow basis, the standardized testing should not be used for teacher evaluations either. Um, that's got to be more, a more comprehensive um, undertaking. So, so there are some risks that are inherent in, in the standardized testing as, as a topic. But at the same time, you've got billions of dollars at stake, and you have policymakers, and you have politicians who need data to help them make decisions and set their own priorities. Uh, so the standardized tests aren't going away anytime soon. So really, for the board and the district, from my perspective, it's well how do you how do you invoke this in a meaningful and understanding way and you know my own in my own family um, we have instances where you know standardized you know I've, I've got a kid who doesn't perform well in standardized mm -hmm. tests um, he's doing great in college but why because we understood early that um, that child was going to be somebody who was a, a doer and a learn by doing and so when it came time for college education we had to sit back and look well, how do we pick the best school that would facilitate his need in terms of being a doer and learn by doing? Um, but we've had, you know, two of our other kids have done, you know, perfectly fine on, on standardized testing. So, um, complicated topic. I think we can all personalize it. Um, but it does feed into, into where the uh, Core 24 is, is developing. Uh, the Smarter Balanced Assessment is something um, that takes into account some of the risks for the individual child in terms of they're not time-based. They include, um, uh, you know, translation services. There are, you know, inherent facilities like calculators and things to help the students take the test. Uh, but at the same time, we can't overuse um, or overemphasize where they where they should be used. I think there there are some risks in that as well. Yeah, I think that's a topic that's not going to go away anytime soon. Well, yeah, I think, <laughs> you know, um, I, I really, I, I have been able to personalize and understand directly from staff members and teachers through uh, the participation in the, um, you know, Graduates Ready for Life, um, or for success, that is, uh, a work group at the, in the Strategic Directions Initiative, whereby, um, you know, they, they make it very clear that, you know, if you, if you over, use standardized tests, you risk the fact that the teachers will lose the ability to be creative in the, in the classroom environment. The school itself will be less inclined to want to innovate and help their student bodies because those change every year and they're shifting you know, priorities there. And you know, there's, there's just way, way too much at risk if you, if you way overemphasize those tests. At the same time, um, We've got to just invoke them on, on a balanced and, and sensitive way in the district because we also have to help our legislators, you know, make the decisions they need with uh, the, the large dollars and tax dollars that are at stake. Okay. All right. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about an issue that um, has um, certainly seemed to capture a fair amount of publicity in the last few months, and that is the 
crumb tire rubber yeah. fields. Um, now, probably you have some interesting perspectives because you, you had kids who actually played sports and mm -hmm. a couple of mm -hmm. kids who played football, right? Mm -hmm. So the issue is, um, you know, the, there's uh, this artificial tire crumb rubber that has been used in athletic fields, not just in our school district, but in many districts as well as professional sports fields for a while. And there um, was a plan to put, you know, a new field up at the uh, Old Woodway High School and right. um, some community members have been worried about some health and environmental concerns related to that. Um, and of course the school board took a look at it, decided to go ahead and proceed with the, the original plan of the, the turf and mm -hmm. it's already mm -hmm already been installed or almost ready to be installed is my understanding. So do you, have you, is this something you've looked at? Have you thought about it? Are you at a point where you um, have any particular position on it or what, I guess moving forward maybe, what would you think the district should do about the issue? Well, um, I, I have watched the issue closely. Uh, I was at the board meeting, um, there have been several board meetings where it's been discussed, but I was at the the, the board meeting, the, the uh, school district board meeting where it was voted on, mm -hmm. which was um, a very lively meeting. A <laughs> um, little lesson in civics there. It was, it was, it was um, on balance, I thought the board did a great job in, in helping and facilitating that session, but they got through their vote. Um, I also attended um, a couple of city council meetings where the issues uh, have been discussed. And I, I think first and foremost, I, you know, the, the neighbors of the fields uh, in question, um, on the positive side, I think they've really brought an awareness to this issue that, that I certainly didn't have before. Um, and I know that the, the school board has said openly as well that you know, they've appreciated the efforts that have gone into helping understand the risks um, and some of the issues that are associated with uh, the, the crumb rubber fill itself the, and the, the carcinogens in, involved therein. But on balance, it's a big, it's a big question, it's a big issue because it's, it's one that's taken years to get to this point in development and progress. And it's taken the cooperation, you, you know, precedent setting, it's taken the cooperation between Verdant, the mm -hmm. school district, and the city, even to get it to this, to this point. Um, I, I don't really have a position staked out. Um, I know that there's a crying need for more sports fields uh, within Snohomish County. I know this is uh, a controversial one because of the awareness that's being built. Um, but I also, it, one thing I, I would point to, and, and, I, and I don't want to put him on the spot, but I know Gary Noble had made some comments in the, in the school district approval vote. And um, I think going forward, I think I'd want to look into this a little bit more closely. And that is, this is, these fields will be one of eight, nine, or 10 that will exist in the school district itself. Um, among the thousands in, in the state and country. Um, and there is a recycling schedule associated with these f fields. So even if at the point where, uh, and it could happen at any time, I, I, I suppose, but even at, at some point where uh, it's determined that you know, there's enough evidence that these fields should be recycled or they'll be recycled on their own schedule, which is roughly, about, given the number of fields, I think it's roughly every eight, nine, or 10 years. In fact, the, the high school field was just recycled. Just, yeah, they just finished This that year, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So um, there's, you know, we'll see these fields turn over. And I would hope that, uh, and I know that, that uh, in talking uh, with some of the board members, uh, I've actually talked to Dave, Dave Erling on, on the topic, the mayor, and uh, and past board members. I think they're all interested in making sure we have a, a healthy and safe environment for our kids. And as these fields are turned over, you know, we give real strong consideration to our, you know, are the, are the fields going to be built with safe and, um, 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 and you know, sa safe materials, as we would in any construction project. Mm -hmm. So, um, not a strong position staked out, but certainly open to, to learning more and, and understanding how we can best facilitate things going forward. Okay, okay. Let's talk a little bit about um, full day kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, early learning, of course, has been a hot topic too, and as more and more from the state level on down, people are starting to realize the value of having kids, you know, getting into preschool right. Right. and getting that education. Um, and of course, our school district, the Edmond School District, does offer full day kindergarten mm -hmm. um, via the lottery system right. and free of charge for students in schools, depending on free or reduced right. lunch, right. I think. Right. Um, I, I've heard that there may be plans afoot to expand 
full data all of the schools, but there have been some districts that have kind of taken the initiative to do mm -hmm. it sooner and have been offering full day kindergarten in all their schools for a while. Is this something that, you know, you knowing what you know at this point, um, is it something that um, you think is, uh, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. but mm -hmm. do you think given the level of kind of emphasis that's being placed that maybe it's something that the district should have done a little sooner or, you know, kind of is there anything we can do to hurry it up if you think it's important? Yeah, you know, um, great. Uh, great topic. Uh, it's one that af affected our family early on when we first uh, mo we moved to Edmonds. One of the key reasons was the strength of the school district. Mm -hmm. um, both Kathy and I are full-time uh, you know, career parents uh, and trying to balance the, needs, the education needs of the kids at the same time. And we were faced with that question directly uh, in terms of when they were done with uh, preschool, what were they to do next? And we didn't, full-time kindergarten was not an alternative we had through the school district. Um, and here we are, you know, 20 some odd years later, and um, we're still faced with, we're getting there, but, um, you know, we're still faced with families facing challenges and, and kids being affected by, by that exact circumstance. Um, I do know that the, the state's committed to support full, full day kindergarten. I think it's in roughly the 2018 time frame. Yeah, I want to say. That's about right. Um, uh, you know, there, there could be some legislative uh, contingencies there, um, but we're in a, that transition period, right, where we're, uh, there isn't enough money to make it happen, you know, statewide all at the same time. And, yeah, we have put families in tough situations. We've got schools where, uh, you know, the priority funding has gone because they had a higher density of low-income kids, you know, the free and reduced uh, lunch program kids, um, who've gotten that funding and have that kindergarten available to them, but there are students there who's, who are not, and parents' families are not in that, that same socioeconomic class, and, and they're getting the free, you know, the free kindergarten as a result. So we're, we're having these inequities along the way while we're, we're in this transition period. Um, you know, the one thing I think the board needs to do is, is listen attentive to, uh, attentively to this topic. Um, it's got the strategic direction, direction group to channel some of that input. Um, I do know that at the district level, the whole topic of, um, you know, preschool through third grade and early learners is, is a high priority topic. Uh, there's just mounting evidence that investment in that environment is, is, is pays off um, greatly at, at throughout a kid's education. I mean, imagine, and, and I have a very close friend who's devoted their career to early learning. And it came, it, you know, became apparent to me, and I was, if you can just imagine two kids going into kindergarten on the same day, and one's got a greater vocabulary than the other. Well, the experts can look at those two kids and they can earmark, right? And they see key performance indicators already that are, are indicative of how that child will progress the rest of their, you know, grade school, middle school, and high school experience. Um, well, what does it tell you? I mean, are, are, are we devoting enough time and resource uh, to that environment to make sure that we, we bring all our kids along, especially by the time they get to third grade, so that we've got a level playing field and, and have, you know, the attention that they need to develop as early learners to best propel them going forward. Uh, you know, the key performance in indicators are not um, always conclusive, but they are signs. And, um, and I know through the, through the strategic initi initiative group uh, activities that uh, we've got a bunch of great educators who are, are focused and uh, c can bring the care and attention needed to those kids, but it is important. We've got to get them the resources they need, they need to do that. So, at, yeah, at the district level, I think the board should be looking very closely at are we, are we spending the available dollars in the right place, and we should be giving that topic adequate attention by, by all means. Okay. Is there anything, any one particular burning issue I didn't ask about that you wanted to bring up? Um, well, you know, when I, when I decided, yes, so when I decided, yes, as a matter, yes, of, fact. As a matter of fact, there's, <laughs> there's more than one, but it, there is one burning one. Uh, so when I, when I decided I was going to run for this office, right, um, the one thing that, that, that I looked into very, very quickly and just was really intrigued with what, what, what challenges, what are the highest burning challenges that the, that the classroom, the instructor, the teachers, the educators, the paraeducators, what are they experiencing um, that make it, you know, that is their biggest challenge? And why is that important to me? Because that's all 
indicative of where we're going with student achievement, right? So student achievement is directly tied to what they're going to experience in the classroom. Well, what our teachers are experiencing is, uh, and I, I find to be almost mind-boggling, um, you know, in terms of the sheer workload that they have to balance, it's affecting their, their personal and professional lives. Um, they're being asked to do more and more with less. Uh, and, um, you know, clearly the McCleary decision is, is, has ruled in their favor, but we're still waiting for the effects of it to fully, you know, um, uh, meet themselves out. And uh, in the meantime, you know, they need more paraeducators. Uh, we need smaller class sizes, but we don't have money to, to, to build the facilities necessary to accommodate that. Uh, we need money for um, uh, English language learners, special needs kids. We, we need money to just f outfit the classroom with paper and supplies. And yet we have our educators walking into that environment every day and still having to find a way to make the classroom stimulating and important for these kids every day. It, I'm, just, I'm just, well, A, I'm thankful for the work that they're doing, but be really taken aback by uh, the breadth and the magnitude of the challenges uh, our educators are facing. Mm -hmm. yeah, teachers have a tough job, there's no doubt about that. I think about that all the time. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, well, uh, now is your opportunity to uh, look into the camera and uh, tell voters why they should support you in the election, so have at it. Thanks, Teresa. So, um, why should you vote for Bill Wilcock? Well, when you, when you vote for Bill Wilcock, you're going to get a candidate that's passionate about education and is fundamentally and sincerely interested in student achievement for all of our students in the district. Um, I'm motivated to give back to the community, uh, the community of education within the Edmond School District um, because it's benefited my family directly and, and I know how it can impact children's lives and build um, a, better, a better future for uh, not only our local community, but the greater community at large. And thirdly, you'll get a candidate that's got a breadth of experience at the district level, not a one school focus, but one that understands and um, is vitally interested in bringing up the quality of education in the Edmond School District. Uh, and by extension, that'll bring up the quality of life in our community. Very good. Well, thanks very much for coming in today, and I wish you the best of luck in your campaign. Thanks, Teresa. It's been great to be here. Thanks for your help.